Hey guys, it's Joe here. It's the fall now. More and more people are getting into camping. I get comments every single day about asking me about what gear I have, ask me to, to do a full rundown of my gear, all that stuff. So this video is going to be every possible piece of gear that I have for fall camping or being out for the day. By that I mean being in the forest, making a fire, possibly being protected from wind, rain, uh, food, bringing food, cooking it, um, finding water, bringing water, all that stuff, or camping. That's what this video is about for the fall. I hope that's clear. So, what do we start with? We start with the fun stuff. Let's start with the fun stuff. So right in front of me, <coughs> excuse me, right immediately in front of me, I have all the axes, hatchets, tomahawks, knives, and saws that I would use in the fall. A lot of these overlap. These overlap whether or not I'm camping, whether or not I'm in the woods for the day, whether or not it's fall, summer, spring, winter, whatever. But again, fall so first up Mora Bushcraft Black great knife uh, it's a Scandinavian grind all of my knives are Scandinavian grind except for my Turley Gasconade this knife is a convex knife probably my favorite knife Adventure Sworn Explorer, Deering EDC, Bushcraft EDC. So if they all have their place, like if I if I'm planning on going out and using my knife a lot for a lot of a lot of strong work and stuff, I'm not going to bring my small little Deering EDC uh, Bushcraft. I'm going to bring my Turley or possibly my Adventure Sworn. The Adventure Sworn's a beast too. It's a 530 seconds thick. It's it's big. It's, it's a thick knife. So, anyways, on the outside of my Adventure Sworn, I have a fire steel in the fire steel loop attached with a elastic uh, shock cord. I also have the world's biggest fire steel with the orange <laughs> handle and big lanyard, so I can't lose it. And then a normal smaller fire steel. I would bring any of those out, or a lighter, or matches. But those are, I have been using a fire steel a lot lately. Um, my tomahawk is my cold steel trailhawk with Kydex by Copperhead Outdoors. Ron, uh, Ron over there. Anyways, nice, uh, nice tool for playing around in the woods. I probably wouldn't bring this on an actual camping trip. Maybe if I wanted to do like, um, like a limited gear, go lightweight kind of thing, I'd bring this, but who knows, this is more just for playing around having fun. It's a very, very useful tool though. My Gransfer's Brooks Outdoor Axe, which I've been using a heck of a lot lately. I really like this axe. This will probably take place, or take precedence over this, take this one's place. It just, the head's thicker. Um, Tomahawk's probably a little bit heavier, but that's with the handle and everything. But this, this axe can do a lot. I really really am enjoying using this one and the sheath on it is nice because the leather part covers the back so you can it's meant to be thrown into a backpack so you don't have to worry about like the the, the corners catching um the corners of the pole of the axe catching on things in your backpack and ripping them sorry there's people walking by um and ripping them next up probably my favorite axe my sandvik uh one and a quarter pound head on a 20 inch uh, handle. It's made in Sweden. My buddy Mike rehung it for me. And then again, the mask is by Ron at Copperhead Outdoors. I see my cat's been chewing on the leather. Sweet. And he also hooked me up with the, the leather collar. That's a really, really versatile ax, man. I would bring this on a bushcraft overnight. I would bring this on a canoe trip. I would bring this uh, oh, for the day. I would not bring this on a backpacking trip. I might bring this on a backpacking trip, the Grants vs. Brooks Outdoor Axe, if I, was, if I wasn't going to bring a saw. 
My saw is my Silky Gone Boy. It's got the large teeth on it. Only broke a little bit off the tip, which is a feat. <laughs> my other saw, which I've been using a lot lately, this, this, this saw is more for heavy duty work. I'd still bring this. It doesn't weigh much. I brought this on a canoe trip, a uh, nine day canoe trip. But this is an Agawa Canyon Boreal 21. It is a fantastic saw. A bit on the short side for a buck saw, in my opinion, but there's you can't have it all. I don't want I want packability too. It's pretty lightweight, nice and easy to set up and take down. Super simple. Really like it. Uh, the last axe. This is my grandma's axe, the grandma's basement axe. When I moved into this house. I found this axe in the basement. This was my grandma's house forever. She bought it new. And um, I had a friend in Ohio, Kenny, fix it up. This is the axe I brought with me on a loan. This is, I've, I've used this for years. I love this axe. It dug outside, made me the sheath. And yeah, it's a two and a half pound Dayton style head on a 26 inch hickory handle with a super contoured handle with a really big flare at the butt. I really, really like this axe, guys, a whole lot. This is my axe. I left the, <laughs> told Buddy to leave the red paint on it. Uh, it's just like a nostalgic thing. Yeah, I like this axe a lot. Why are you licking the couch? Why are you licking the couch, Scoot? Okay, fun toys out of the way. Move on to boots. So a lot of you know that I'm an advocate of wearing trail runners on a backpacking trip and on canoe trips because they get wet and they dry easily. Whereas anything else you wear is gonna get wet and stay wet. The exception to the rule is the fall. I don't know, I'd probably still wear trail runners on a backpacking trip, but anything else, I wanna be wearing hiking boots in the fall and, the, and before the snow comes in the winter. So I've been wearing these Solomon Quests for probably four years. There's a really funny story behind that. Uh, Kyle and I went on a, a canoe trip, went to go on a canoe trip in Algonquin and I forgot my boots at home. I was, I was using these, these army surplus Mickey Mouse style boots for the longest time and I forgot these at home. And uh, we got all the way up and I realized I ha only had my skater shoes, my freaking DCs. So we stopped at a bunch of stores, ended up finding these and Kyle actually bought these for me on one of our first trips. So thank you Kyle again. But as you can see, they're wearing apart. The soles are completely detached from the boot. I've fixed it like three, four times. Gorilla glue, shoe goo, all that stuff. These Solomon Quest, man, they're awesome. Really lightweight, really uh, aggressive tread, nice hikers. I like these boots a whole lot, except for the fact they started to fail like a year after I got them. So, and I've just been dealing with this the whole time. So this year I got I went to Sale in Cambridge, Sale Outdoor Store in Cambridge. I got myself a pair of, of Vask, V-A-S-Q-U-E, hiking boots. They're all leather and Gore-Tex, a little bit different style. They don't feel half as comfortable as my Solomons. I'm hoping, the ankle is very stiff and I'm hoping that after I wear them for a while they get broken in, but they're more narrow it seems. It might, I don't know, I'm not sold on them, that's for sure. The, the, Insole is removable, which is a big deal to me, but it's very thick, which is awesome for comfort, but it's not good for when you want to dry them out by the fire. So drying Gore-Tex boots out is always a chore. Uh, it probably won't happen anyways, but there's always that, I'm going to set my boots by the fire kind of thing at night anyway. You're sitting there anyways, right? So I'll do a little update on this. They have Vibram soles. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do an update after. I've worn these maybe five times now. They're getting broken in. They're just, they're just not as comfy as my Solomons. So I mentioned that I started with the Mickey Mouse. These are Canadian surplus. I got them for 40 bucks and I've worn them for years. Uh, people who are complaining about high prices on gear, surplus, man, all the way. That's how I started. That's how I freaking maintained for years. Surplus. Uh, muck boots, muck chore boots. I also wore these on the island uh, for a loan. These are my go-to when it's sloppy out, when it's super mucky and wet. You can actually roll down the top and get your leg ventilated. This neoprene rolls down pretty easily. 
it rolls down easier when you have it on anyways all the way down to there um yeah they're good boots your feet sweat like crazy in them but they're good boots <sighs> sleeping gear and shelter let me check the time on my camera i might might be running long on this one eight minutes left on this on this clip okay so sleeping gear and shelter well this can this can vary quite a bit right depending on temperature it's the fall it can fluctuate you can have three season weather in the fall so sleeping pads first off this is my trusty um thermorest neo air if it's going to be soupy outside if it's going to be super super wet and and damp and just nasty out this is what i'm going to bring it packs down very small uh and the water doesn't travel up it i've had this for like five years going strong never punctured punctured it sleep right on the ground with it um yeah man couldn't say enough good things about this one i don't know what model this one is maybe the trucker model i'm not sure but you can't even buy this model anymore i'm i'm pretty sure i looked for it but what i did get earlier this year in the spring and i've been using all year is this thermarest neo air x therm so this is the same deal as that but it packs down smaller it's lighter and it's contoured so that's how small it is compared to like a nalgene it's very small very uh packable but it's contoured it's not a rectangle like the other one so some people don't like it i don't care i'm not big it, it suits me just fine high r value too what does it say on here or no i don't know five point something i'm not sure but high high r value i'll use this in the winter time i've used this every winter since i got it they said not to blow in them because the condensation in your in your breath can get it wet inside and ruin it I, I blowed in it every single winter I've had it. Five years straight. Um, sleeping bags is a big thing. Sleeping bags, uh, I'm always going to go with down now. Uh, maybe like down treated with the DWR to give it a little bit of water resistance. But down, in my opinion, is the way to go. Super lightweight, warm, and, and packable. Uh, the downside being, obviously, if it gets wet, it's no good. But... It takes a lot to get a sleeping bag really wet. I've had this wet and still kept me warm, but the whole thing wasn't drenched. You know, the condensation, dew, even some rain on the foot box. But this is a positive three Celsius down sleeping bag from Mountain Equipment Co-op in Canada. Um, I think if you're in the States, REI would have similar things. This is their brand. Um, you always get a better deal that way. Positive three. I, won't want, I don't want to test this down to negative. I don't want to take this down to pass around zero, but that's including my poly liner. Okay, so that's just a poly liner that goes right inside, and I'll take this down to zero, like I said, but it's a positive three bag. I don't know if I said positive three or, or negative Celsius. Um, I bought it under the assumption it was a negative three, and then they had to rebate and all this crazy stuff. Turns out it's a positive three. I will use that down to zero, like I said. And that goes in my Sea to Summit stuff sack, which is being used by my negative seven mountain hardware sleeping bag right now. So this, this is how small the negative seven bag goes down. It's about twice the size that the positive three sleeping bag packs down to. Sea to Summit uh, compression sack is still nylon. It's lightweight, it's durable. I've used it as well as long as I've had that this sleeping bag which is five years i bought it at the same time as that sleeping pad and the and the stuff sack so going strong not too many rips a little bit here and there but whatever so right inside i've got my down pillow a couple of my buddies don't know how how this works for me but it does it packs down nothing when you lay on it it's still enough for me the good thing about it is it fits right inside my sleeping bag um, stuff sack it's small. I always bring it. There's no reason not to bring it for me. There's the stuff sack. So this is called the Paiute, yeah, 20 degree Fahrenheit or negative seven Celsius down sleeping bag from Mountain Hardware. 600 fill down, so it's not even a good one. 800 is a good one, but this has done me well. There's burn holes in it, and I have patched it up with nylon tape. I'm sleeping next to a fire and stuff. So I'll use this 
if I'm on a trip where any of the days come past zero or right, right around zero at night, I'm going to bring this as opposed to my positive three, just because sleep, because sleep. Uh, my wool blanket. I'm going to use this on overnighters. This is an Italian wool blanket. I love this thing. Super warm, way warmer than any of the other ones I've had before. I use this when I'm sleeping next to a fire um, within a shelter or not. I really like this blanket. It smells of, of smoke like crazy now. Uh, when I got it, it was all mothballs and I had done all this research on how to get rid of the mothball smell. Turns out you just have to use it outside. The colder temperature is still in the fall or early winter. I'll, I'll use this sleeping bag liner with my bigger, uh, my negative seven bag as well. It, I, it can really fit into the stuff sack, same stuff, same stuff sack. And it does a lot for you when you're getting into bed. I sleep um, naked or with just boxers on. It does a lot when your, your skin is touching this kind of fabric as opposed to this still nylon kind of fabric for cold wise. Yeah. Okay. Um, shelter in the, in the fall and winter. I don't want to use my tent. There's no need for bu uh, bug protection. And in all honesty, the biggest thing in using a tent for me is bug protection. I will still use the fly on my big Agnes Fly Creek UL1 uh, with, with the, the poles just as a frame if I'm backpacking or maybe on a canoe trip. But for anything else, uh, mainly overnighters in the bush around here, bushcraft overnighters, I'm gonna use tarps. Tarps are my favorite. Uh, my favorite configuration is the Adirondack wind shelter with the fire in front of it. This is my Bushcraft Outfitters 10 by 10 yellow nylon, ripstop nylon um, tarp that I have had for probably seven years, six or seven years. I leave paracord attached to it, not wanting to come out for some reason. What is going on? There we go. Yeah, so ripstop nylon. Not the lightest stuff in the world, but very, very tough. I've used this. I brought this to on a loan too, actually, uh, on, on Vancouver Island. I've patched it up uh, right here. I had to patch it up because I had it over top of a, a tent and the wind broke the tent poles and shot through the, the fabric here, the nylon, but Ripstop did its thing. That patch has held for three, four years now. This, this tarp, reeks of smoke in a good way. The bugs don't even want to come around that tarp. <laughs> uh, my second tarp and probably my favorite for lightweight stuff is my Kyle made tarp. Tarp that Buddy Kyle made. It's a 9 by 9 sill nylon. Super squeezable, packable, um, lightweight and well put together with good tie out points. I also have paracord attached to that and I can I can set this up in a ton of different configurations. The biggest thing here, and with all my gear, the biggest thing here is not, not specifically the type or brand or, or make of my gear, it's just the ideas of what you could possibly bring for what applications. I honestly don't care or advocate any gear, any specific gear. I'm not out here, yeah, anyways. I started with Canadian Tire gear, which Canadian Tire for you guys in the States is like, a, I don't even know, like a Walmart kind of thing um, with that gear. And I did totally fine with that gear for the longest time. So this is just ideas of what you can use. Anyways, Square Tarp will give you options for tons of different configurations that you might not have options for if you're using um, a rectangular tarp. <sighs> my five by seven um, survival tarp. This is a great tarp. I've used this to camp under in a lean-to configuration in the A-frame. I've used this as a pack cover. I've used this as a hammock, as shelter um, shelter building shelter building material gathering to put leaves on and bring to shelters. Great piece of kit. This is a, and this can fit in my pocket. Like when it's all rolled up like that, it can fit in my cargo pocket. It can fit in the front 
um, slot on my backpack. It takes no room at all. This I bring on day trips. Um, and then I might even bring it as a secondary, as a ground sheet or, or like a door for, for my secondary um, tarp shelter on a, a longer um, trip. My seat, my chair will be a bush chair in the fall. Um, this is just a piece of sil nylon that you tie a tripod out of, out of sticks, tie this to the top, and then there's a sleeve on the bottom where you slide a stick through, a log through, and you kind of sit like this. And it's uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do. It's super lightweight, and then you have a, a very relaxing chair that you could possibly even sleep on if you were that tired, but uh, with a back support. And uh, yeah, it's just not the most convenient thing with a bunch of people because you're trying to get around the fire and you have to move this big tripod and stuff, but by yourself or with one other person, look at that. Look at that, small, it's like a baseball and light, doesn't weigh anything. Yep, paracord bag, which doubles as my bear hanging bag. Put some rocks in here, toss it over a limb. I've got a smaller paracord bag for my day trips. This is a bag I made out of my wife's old leggings or tights, whatever you want to call them, a little ditty bag. Uh, okay, this is long. Getting long here. Clothing. Clothing's a big thing. I get a question a day about what kind of pants I wear. These pants, the pants with the black butt, the black knees, the foot, uh, the, the knee pads, the cool pockets, green, black. These are Fall Raven Vita Pro trousers. The other ones I have are Fall Raven Keb trousers, K E B. I like them a lot. They have clips at the bottom to make them tight. That's probably my favorite feature. The pockets, the ax loop, lots of good stuff. You can wax these. Uh, so I wear these in a bush. These are my bush pants and I have another pair. Uh, my shirt, my sweater, this is a mech slipstream hoodie. I like it. It's a lightweight poly fleece kind of. Um, I, can't, I don't bring many clothes when I go. Even if I go for a week, it's like, Really, whatever I'm wearing plus an emergency set of clothes and three pairs of socks, always. Always three pairs of socks, something to change into at night. I don't even know what's in here. This is from my last camp, from my last aborted camp. I didn't get to go. Um, so I've got things like a merino wool long sleeve shirt with a hood. I've got Costco uh, long johns, they're like 11% merino wool or something. The rest is poly, I think. Spandex, whatever, poly. Under Armour underwear. Backup pants that are very, very, very lightweight. These things weigh nothing. These have been what I've been using all summer for canoeing. So those, are, I don't mind bringing them as a backup pair of pants when they're that small. Um, socks. Darn Tough, my new go-to socks. These are ankle socks, but I also bought some Darn Tough longer ones and thicker ones for the winter. These things are awesome. I really, really enjoy wearing these socks. And they have a, excuse me, they have a really good return policy as well. I think they're out of Vermont. Uh, again, a light, uh, long sleeve, like fleecy kind of poly shirt. I got this at Winters for 20 bucks, man, cheap. A toque is always in my kit in the fall. Uh, whether it be this beanie or a merino wool one that's smaller, uh, always invaluable. And I'll normally wear a baseball cap. You have to keep the sun off your head and potentially out of your eyes regardless, even in the summer, especially in the summer. I got made fun of for wearing a toque and sunglasses. It's the summer, or it's the winter. Have I been saying summer the whole time? I mean in the winter. There's snow on the ground, the glare off the snow. Yeah, you get it. I've got shirts like this Fall Raven um, flannel. It's cotton, beware. And then this wool, this is called the granite shirt. So this is a Fall Raven wool granite shirt with uh, some reinforced elbow pads and, and shoulder pads. Am I missing any clothes? I don't think so. I got, I went over my socks. Uh, wool socks for me is, is the ideal. Uh, Under Armour style underwear, merino wool, long johns, merino wool undershirts, 
merino wool over shirts, wool over shirts, cotton blend over shirts. Um, oh, and uh, where is it? My my puffy jacket. So this is it, the puffy jacket, the uplink. This has synthetic insulation. I've had this for years. I also brought this on alone. Um, I like this a lot and I'll buy another one. The Uplink 2 actually has a hood and pockets here, which this one does not have. I've got holes in this and I patch this up the same way I patched my tarp up with, uh, and my sleeping bag with nylon tape, nylon ripstop tape. As far as rain gear, it's important. This is my whole rain gear setup. Rain gear is important in the fall. You can't get cold, start to shiver and stuff. So I have this spring I bought an Arcteryx rain jacket for my tomogamy trip. I've only had to wear it a few times this year. It's expensive, not gonna lie. But again, you can go to, you can get a Walmart style, like, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. The, the one might rip, the one might not um, keep you as dry as advertised. I'm putting my money here. This is probably my fifth rain jacket I bought. Hopefully it's the last one for a while. Uh, rain pants, nothing special there. They just slip on over. My gloves, I love these things. These are Hestra. Can't remember the exact make. They're leather, insulated leather Hestra gloves. H-E-S-T-R-A. I love them. Really nice. They came with some uh, some lubricant, some grease. You gotta, you gotta lube them up every now and then. Lube your leather. Same with the boots. Okay, almost done, guys. Cooking stuff. Cooking stuff in the fall. For me, consists of my 12 inch zebra pan, which has the removable uh, inner, inner dish, the 10 inch, which has the same, my new frying pan with foldable handle, this is a GSI frying pan, it says don't cook over it on the fire, but I'm a rebel. And then I've also got what normally would be my summer but I'm not gonna rule it out, uh, kit, which is my Solo uh, 900 Solo by Snow Peak, or 900 Solo Pot, I think it's called by Snow Peak. So inside it, I also have my Bush Buddy, but I am ruling out what twig stoves for the fall time. Ever since fall hit, I have not used it, and it's been all fires all the time. This thing I got at the beginning of the year and it has seen some use, man. I could scrape that soot off. It's probably a couple millimeters thick. So that's my cooking stuff. Um, and then in conjunction with, with these containers, so I'll be frying, boiling, double boiling, or poaching almost. Um, I've also got a grill that I got a couple months ago and it's still, it's still in the works. I know a lot of people ask me about it, but it's still in the works. We're, we're trying to get it to sell it. But this is a stainless steel wire grill, lightweight, fits right in this stuff sack I got from old old Malcolm, and uh, nice and flat. So this is a, all. This is a really cool setup, and I could use probably just this for day hikes. And I'd probably use this for anything more, unless again I was backpacking and we're going titanium. These are steel. This is titanium. I don't know what this is. Some kind of aluminum, probably. Uh, for water collection, water purification, water storage, and drinking, I'm using my Platypus water, uh, soft water bottle, Analgene, boiling water, or using drops. I can't use my Sawyer now because somebody outside because it's too cold, and if the Sawyer freezes at night, it's uh, it's no good. So I've got the drops or boiling. Probably a combination of both, to be honest, depending, but Scout, it's okay, buddy. I got a dirty flipper I just got. I've been using wood, pieces of wood and sticks for years, but I got a flipper. It's a GSI. It's all dirty. Hey, stop. Ugh. Okay, sorry about that. People outside, Scout's doing his job. Uh, can you go lay down, bud? Cooking and food. Food food differs. Food is food. But I don't I don't not necessarily hung up on rehydrating dehydrating my meals in the in the fall because they st uh, food stays longer. I'm not traveling far distances and stuff like that. Uh, theoretically. I've got a small camp cup, plastic camp cup because normally when I bring these things, 
I don't have something to drink out of. So if I make tea, I'm boiling, I'm drinking the tea right out of the, the, the uh, pot, which is okay, but it's nice sometimes to have this. And if you wanna have a little splash of some adult beverage, same deal, so you're not swinging over the bottle like a G, sipping a 40. <laughs> I got toothpaste, lard, uh, oatmeal, it all, it all differs, man. I got a, um, a titanium spork, it all differs. Doesn't really matter. The point is, you can cook what you want in the fall. Basically, you can keep meat for a little bit longer. Steak, fish, uh, rehydrated food, stuff like that. Uh, bacon and eggs, pancakes, sausages, rice, all easy stuff. Grilling, b boiling combinations, stuff like that. It's nice and easy. Um, is that it? Are we done? Oh, I've got backpacks. Three backpacks to show you real quick. This is the one that I would use if I was going on a multiple day, anything more than two nights uh, or traveling far distance trying to carry my stuff. So this is a Fall Raven Free Loop 55. You've seen me use this multiple times on canoe trips, on backpacking trips. This is a fantastic backpack. Possibly my favorite backpack I've ever owned. Lightweight, good hip support, nice back support, ventilation. Just really, really good design. I absolutely hate the color, but what are you gonna do? My next one is the one I designed. This is the this is the Why Not Wildland Scout Pack. This is the pack that I would take if I was going out for the day and I needed to bring a lot of gear or a decent amount of gear. If I was going overnight, one night, or if I was doing two nights, I can strap. A wool blanket to the bottom. This is that's that's the the main thing I wanted this bag for. I geared it towards like a bush crafty style camp, right? Where you got a wool blanket hanging off the bottom. You got an axe in your axe loop. You got a water bottle in your water bottle po pouch. You got some food inside. A saw. You know what I mean. Your sit pad is uh, right on the outside for easy storage. Your cooking stuff. All that in here overnight or two nights, or for a, a big day out there, this is my go-to pack. I, I'm, I'm happy with the way it turned out, and I'm hoping that the people who purchased them are using them and, and that they're happy with them as well. Good backpack. This is another one of my very favorite backpacks I've ever used in my life. This is a Hidden Woodsman Day Rock. Got it from Malcolm Coderre. Good guy. Fantastic designer. Um, yeah, same deal with this. I've done overnights with this too. Uh, wool blanket on the bottom. You got your, your side pouch for your water bottle. I actually, uh, the 10 centimeter billy fits right in the, in, the, in the side in the water bottle pouch with your water bottle. You can have your whole cook system there. You got my wallet in front. Whatever you want on the side. Another pouch. Axe on the front. There's a saw sleeve. Thing is a really, really robust hardcore backpack and it just looks awesome there's something about the look of this thing that i'm in love with shout out to malcolm so this is what i'm going to use for the day strictly now now that i have my backpack i'm not going to try and push this for an overnight which is fine to do but that's what that one's for this is my day hike it's it's called the day rock you know what i mean that's what it was designed for it's like a 20 liter bag um love it just absolutely love it I hope this is useful. I hope this is helpful for some people. This is a long video, and if you sat through it, thank you. I appreciate it. I know it's a lot, but I get a ton of questions every day about this specific stuff. I can't bring all this stuff to the woods and do it here. There, I had the house open, house free to me today. I shot this video. I hope it's of some use. I forgot to show my possibles pouch. This can vary. Sometimes I use this one. Sometimes I use a different one from Why Not. But in there, I always have pretty much the same things. It's gonna be a first aid kit with especially gauze band-aids, duct tape, stomach pills, things like that. Things that I know that I'm gonna, if anything, I'm gonna need. Uh, I always got my batteries for my, my DSLR, my GoPro. That's another thing. I carry my GoPro, my DSLR, my tripod, my mic, uh, sometimes my slider, sometimes my secondary fake GoPro. All those, all those things normally come with me on it on a shoot, so, shoot. Um, notepad, 
for writing down ideas, writing down cool things that happen. Compass, this one's a Sunto. Uh, yeah, MC2. Sharpening kit, backup battery, hacky sack to entertain myself. Love a little hack, a little hack. Um, and then a flashlight, headlamp, toilet paper, even for a day hike, toilet paper, man. You know, I'm not trying to pine cone it up. Okay, guys, honestly, I hope this helped. I hope this uh, was a good video for some of you. I hope some people watch it. Let me know in the comments. If I missed anything at all, I'm sorry. It's not intentionally. It's, it's because there's so much stuff that I just went through and I just missed it. So... Let me know. Let me know if there's anything that I did miss that you or questions about anything imperative that you think you might have. Um, if you are just starting to get into to get into this stuff, my best advice is if you want to go camping, have an exit plan. Have um, ha leave a plan with somebody that you know that you trust. Where you're going to be, what you're planning on doing, the times and all that stuff. Have an exit strategy. Leave your car close or have someone ready to pick you up close in case you want to bail in the middle of the night. And you can bail for any reason you want, man. It doesn't matter if you're scared, if you're cold, if you're wet, if you are if you can't sleep, if you're hungry. Who cares? You know I mean, this is supposed to be fun stuff. If you're doing a survival training episode, go talk to some of these guys, these other guys. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll deprive you from, from that stuff. But if you want to go camping, if you want to have fun camping and learn how to camp and, and just be self-reliant out there and comfortable and, and not scared, just start slowly. Have, have those exit strategies so that you can leave if, if, if the need be and come back in the daytime or come back next time maybe with somebody um, with whatever would make you comfortable bring whatever's going to make you comfortable too because there's nobody to, to there's nobody that you have to impress by going minimalist or hardcore if you are just starting this out you'd be smart to bring stuff to make you comfortable and then through the, the next few times you go out, you'll start to wean that stuff away that you that you don't need, that you don't use. And you'll you'll learn that by doing it. But. Okay, I'm done. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye.